Hello and welcome back to the GTN show. This week I'm taking a look at two epic challenges, 200 marathons in 100 days and also checking in with the Iron Cowboy in the middle of his 100 Ironmans in 100 days. But also I'd like to talk to you guys today about rules. Oh yes, we love rules in triathlon. But no, in all seriousness, is it time for us to take a look at and perhaps maybe revamp some of the rules within triathlon? Well, I'd like to invite you guys today to get involved in this discussion with me. So let's dive on in. As I'm on my Todd this week, I thought I'd invite you guys in for a nice healthy debate. So let's talk rules. Now I will say up front and first of all, that I'm not saying that any rules within triathlon are stupid or that they're wrong. However, many rules within triathlon were set many years ago. And given that the sport of triathlon is growing so quickly, it's grown substantially in recent years, is it time that some of these rules were perhaps revisited, perhaps maybe even revamped. Now I've got to be honest, this whole idea has come about after tracking our good pal Joe Skipper over at Ironman 70.3 Texas this weekend. Now in case you missed it, he was riding in Lionel Sanders' group on the bike um, and he was actually riding two wheels back from Lionel with an athlete in between and he felt that the athlete between him and Lionel was letting the gap go on Lionel a bit and potentially allowing the group to split. So he decided to overtake the other cyclist and nip in front of him. However, the draft buster decided that he cut in on that rider, so gave him a penalty, and then later actually changed his story to say that he went within the 12 meters between um, himself and Lionel. However, that aside, Joe decided to ignore the penalty. He was understandably frustrated, didn't feel like he deserved it, which I can understand, and decided that because he was in a good position and felt like he was performing well, he wanted to test himself and see where he would finish regardless. So he ignored the penalty, accepted that he was going to get a, well, be disqualified from the race, and that's that. Um, now, obviously that does <laughs> throw up a whole other debate um, whether he should have done that. Uh, I mean, I totally respect it and understand that I've been in very similar and very frustrating positions before, but given that he is a role model, um, is that the sort of example he should be setting to other people? I mean, if everyone went out and just started ignoring penalties and just racing to the finish line, regardless of being disqualified or not, we'd have utter chaos. But I'm not going to delve into that today. What it has led me on to thinking about is just rules within triathlon full stop and whether they do need a little revisit and a little revamp. So first of all, let's take a look at the draft penalties. Now, typically in most Ironman races, if you get a draft penalty, it's a five minute penalty. Um, now, is that too harsh? or not enough. Now with more congestion due to increased participants in races, then while well, some people inevitably in some races do just find themselves within the draft zone of other riders despite trying to keep away from them. I've also heard of strong female competitors actually passing male competitors, they've caught them up and passed them and that male ego coming through, the male athlete won't let them go, wants to be ahead of the female and they have this, this battle going back and forth and sometimes it's actually the female athlete that ends up getting the penalty just because simply that male athlete is getting in the way. Um, there is also of course some people that simply are happy to break the rules and that is not okay and therefore the penalty probably is just. Um, also uh, slightly different. Now I will say straight up, very thankful to anyone that helps to make a race happen and that includes the draft busters and referees but sometimes the draft busters are simply someone that can drive a motorbike um, and doesn't always necessarily have the knowledge of triathlon and as a result I have seen some unfair penalties being handed out in the past just simply because that draft buster hasn't really understood what's going on or what how the sport works. And I mean, to be handed five minute, minutes as a penalty, that can totally ruin someone's race. So what do you think? Is five minutes as a penalty enough or not enough? I'd like to invite you guys to get involved. 
drop your thoughts in the comments section down below. But of course, there are other rules that perhaps we maybe need to look at. And I've picked out just a few, but of course, if I missed anything, also drop them down in the comments section below. Um, male competitors, well, I guess female as well, uh, can't undo their front tricep suit zip down beyond the bottom of their sternum. And this used to be okay, but in more recent years, they've made it not okay. Whereas a lot of female competitors race in very small crop tops. so. Yeah, interesting one. Um, you can't coach from the sidelines. Now, this is a really interesting one because what constitutes coaching? It seems like a lot of people don't know, including Jan Frodeno himself. I actually saw or listened to a podcast from him the other day in which he said that in Miami he was asking for time checks from Greg Bennett, but Greg Bennett didn't give them to him because he wasn't sure what he was allowed to give and not to give, and Jan felt the same. Uh, so it is very confusing. Um, also, one that I always found quite odd, but I, I do understand it, is the CPSC sticker within helmets. Now, this is a bit of a niche one, it's just for the US, but if you are racing in the US, technically you are meant to have a CPSC sticker in your helmet. Now, from understanding, this one came in in around 1999, that all helmets had to have these stickers in to pass health and safety checks, which is absolutely fine. But if you had an older helmet without one of these stickers, you couldn't race in an Ironman event. They wouldn't let you through into transition or at least out of T1. Um, it's probably less of an issue now, but if you are traveling to the US from Europe or you've got your helmet from Europe, and not from the US, then you could find yourself in a bit of a tricky spot. Um, so yeah, there's just a few that I can think of. But like I said, please let me know any others in the comment section down below and definitely let me know what you think about the drafting. Okay, now for the try news and let's start by talking about these epic challenges. Now back in 2020, Nick Butter completed his mammoth marathon in every country. That's 196 marathons. He soldiered through the unimaginable. He was held at gunpoint. He was bitten by a dog. He even suffered a heart attack. It was absolutely bonkers and so, so inspiring. Well, he's at it again because later this week, April the 17th at 6 a.m. He is setting off from the Eden Project, which is on the south coast in Cornwall of the UK, as he attempts to run around 11 hours per day, trying to clock off two marathons per day, as he does 200 marathons in 100 days around the British coastline, which is 8,430 kilometers in all. Now, since his success in running around the world he's actually set up a non-profit charity called 196 foundation um, supporting charities all around the world and he'll be running counterclockwise for this challenge around britain and hopefully finishing back at the eden project on july the 26th now anyone that's watched mark beaumont's around the world documentary on gcm plus will have witnessed and seen just how much in terms of logistics goes into these sorts of attempts and it's no different for nick he's got four RV campers with food and supplies all supporting him and helping him through this um, and also just in terms of the training which is interesting for us guys he's been running around 400 kilometers a week to train for this which is absolutely mind-blowing and also aside from just the physical challenge here he's also got the British weather to contend with because well anyone that lives in Britain will know that we've had basically all four seasons this past week. Um, so hopefully that is um, okay for him. But I mean, given his around the world attempt, I'm sure he'll manage it. Well, now moving on to the next epic challenge and that is to the Iron Cowboy, James Lawrence, as he attempts to do 100 Ironmans in 100 days. And round now he is approaching the halfway point. Now, if you haven't been following him on social media, he has actually, unfortunately, been suffering with some pretty severe shin pain to the point that he's actually had a carbon shin plate made to almost take that load away from the shin bone itself. And understandably, he's walking the marathons instead of running them, which he has even said is painful mentally, not just physically, because he really, really wants to be running, which I can understand. Uh, now, if you don't know anything about the Iron Cowboy, he previously did 50 Ironmans in 50 states in 50 days, which was, uh, you know, so, so inspiring as well. Um, he is raising money for, um, well, to free modern day slaves um, for a charity called Operation Underground Railroad uh, that is trying to obviously put a stop to human trafficking. So far, he's raised over $100,000. 
dollars, which is so, so impressive. So I do urge you to go over, check him out on social media and go check out his donation page. We're now moving on to some rather sad news and very close to home, in fact. Last week we received the fateful news that Natasha Lewis, who is a local and very talented athlete and friend of the channel, was hit by a car whilst out running and sadly died at the scene. Now, this all happened around 6 a.m. out on the outskirts of Bath while she was out training for an upcoming event. Now, I do actually remember Natasha from her early days in athletics. In fact, she even used to train with my brother as she competed nationally for long jump and 200 meters. She then moved on to um, represent Great Britain in bobsleigh and then had some great success in triathlon too. Now she was well loved within the local community. She was a personal trainer and co-owned the business Get Fit in Bath. Now, as a result some friends have actually set up a fund in her memory um, designed to support athletes who are in need of running shoes and have that same passion and drive for athletics like Natasha did. So if you'd like to head on over to that uh, GoFundMe page the description for that is on screen right now and in the description just down below but of course from GTN here our thoughts to go out to Dave, her partner, her family and of course her close friends. Okay, moving on, and what do you think to this one then? The Japanese government is considering vaccinating its Olympic and Paralympic athletes by the end of June, and presumably ahead of much of the population. Um, now, this has come from the Kyudo News Agency report. Now, those reports quote an official with knowledge of the matter who said the athletes will likely receive both inoculations by late June, allowing them time to recover from the vaccination, any possible side effects prior to the games opening at the end of July. Um, now, this also comes amidst uh, Japan receiving or reporting more than 3,000 new COVID-19 cases, which is the highest level in over two months. And uh, well, you can imagine how this has gone down with the Japanese public. Now in March, the IOC President Thomas Bach did restate the COVID-19 vaccination will not be required by athletes competing in the Olympic Games. That aside, some countries, including the US, have said that they will be trying to vaccinate their athletes anyway. Oh, again, what do you guys think to this? Get involved in the comments section down below. But we have more news, and this time it's the PTO. We have more to thank them for, as they're going to be supporting two more races. They're going to be providing a pro prize purse for the Trade in International Triathlon, which will be the 2021 Spanish Long Distance Triathlon Championships, will be held in Girona at the end of May, the 30th of May. Uh, the PTO will be providing an additional 12 thousand euros to the existing prize purse of three thirty thousand euros um, along with media and marketing support to showcase the event and athletes they've also partnered with the french triathlon federation and event organizer tri games to provide and again, a prize purse for the French National Championships which are taking place on the 6th of June um, in the south of France. They're going to be providing €13,000 alongside the existing prize purse. So yeah, another great job by the PTO there. We're now moving on to some tech and we have just one main standout piece this week and that is some smart swim goggles. Now these come from Finnis after nearly two years worth of research and development and they've partnered with Sai for this, I think that's how you say it, it stands for coach in your eye and they've partnered in order to deliver what they call the most innovative and interactive swimming experience to date. Very fancy. Uh, from what I can tell though, this device basically attaches to the inside of these specific Finnis goggles. Um, it then tracks and displays your laps, split times, set times, recovery times and so on. Um, and essentially this, this device sits in the corner of the goggle so it's almost non-invasive. You can see fine and past it without a problem but you can also glance to the side and see all these stats and metrics um, and then after your swim you can connect it to an app for a complete breakdown of your swim and share your workout and whatnot on social media. Other than that I don't know much more at the moment but you know, Finnis do do a good job of all their swimming apparatus and equipment so I can imagine this is probably pretty well done. Um, now you can pre-order that at the moment for 235 euros or 235 dollars and I believe it's available next month so again go check it out if you're interested. Okay now moving on to the race results and before we actually look at the race results from the weekend I thought we'd take a look at the PTO rankings for the Collins Cup 
prior to the races this weekend. Now, as a little recap for you, the PTO have a ranking system for the Collins Cup for the internationals, USA and Team Europe, and essentially allowing the captains of each of these areas to select their teams based upon the athletes' points and rankings. At least it's there to help them to see which athletes are performing the best. So currently on the international side, the top three women are Theresa Adam, Paula Finlay, and then Sarah Crowley in third. On the men's side, we've got Lionel Sanders leading it, just ahead of Braden Curry and then Cameron Worth in third. Over on Team USA, it's Rudy Von Berg leading the men's side, just ahead of Matt Hansen and Chris, Chris Lieferman in third, and Sam Long actually, a little bit behind. Um, on the women's side, Jocelyn McClawley, uh, Chelsea Sodaro and Sarah Pian Piano in third. But then over on Team Europe's side, we've got Daniela Reef, unsurprisingly leading the women, um, Anne Haug in second, and Lucy Charles Barkley in third. And then on the men's side, Jan Frodeno leading the men's, uh, Alistair Brownlee, and then Sebastian Keenley, and actually Gustav Edom in fourth. Um, so yeah, we've still got obviously plenty of races to go, so um, it will also be interesting to see how the results from this weekend impact those results, which will come out next week. So of course it takes a little bit of work compiling all this data and all the al algorithms, which Torsten Rad is working hard on. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at this weekend's race results, because we had Challenge Shepparton, which is actually actually come back after a two-year hiatus so we had some exciting racing on the men's side it was Max Newman that took the win just ahead of Josh Amberger and Steve McKenna in third on the women's side it was Ellie Salthaus that took the win although disappointed that she couldn't duke out against Amelia Watkinson that unfortunately rolled her ankle um, so couldn't race uh, Penny Slater took second and Grace Steck in third and then for Ironman 70.3 Texas well we had an exciting race on both sides but Lionel Sanders coming through at the end to take the win uh, just ahead of Ben Canute around a minute behind and Sam Long in third on the women's side Sky Munch that took the win with Jenny Metzler in second and Sophie Watts in third. Well now let's take a look at all the photos that you guys have been sending in to us and last week I asked you to send in some of your training photos, racing photos, given that a lot of us are getting more active and you guys have not disappointed. I got tons through so starting off with this one from Troy from California he said with all the races cancelled fearless triathlon club in California put on their own socially distanced self-timed club sprint triathlon here Sarah just steaks out the wind beating Troy to the finish line oh that looks good looks like a proper sprint finish as well uh, next one from Romank um, he's taken a photo a very nice photo of his new Canyon Speed Max CF8 disc with di2 which is the same setup as heather's got which is it's a lovely lovely looking bike um, he said it's his first ride on his speed max around zoic lake um, and he stopped for a quick pit stop and to take a lovely photo and um, he said he's checking out the route of the dire black extreme triathlon which is a 70.3 distance with over 1600 meters of elevation gain on the bike and over 1100 meters of elevation gain on the run uh, that's taking place hopefully at the end of may and he can't wait to race that sounds like an epic race i might have to check that one out um, next one from michael and he sent in a picture of his new pain cave in the middle of his living room in front of the TV beside the, the log burner. Um, he said with the pool shut in Switzerland right now and the snow still on the ground, he's purchased a water rower to supplement his training through the winter. And also he's been chewing through the kilometers on the turbo trainer in prep for Ironman Frankfurt um, and the Tun Ironman later this year. Well, best of luck to you. You're doing a fantastic job there and really adapting. Um, but finally, I love this one from Deborah uh, from Caithness in Scotland. Um, and they said, a very snowy but amazing swim with Wick Triathlon Club. Uh, we all did 20 to 25 minutes of swimming. Uh, the guy in grey did it all in skins. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, it's great to be out um, swimming during lockdown and to meet the club and be able to train now, fingers crossed, for some races later this year. Well, knowing that, that well, that's the North Sea there, essentially coming through. So 
Whew, that is going to be cold, I'd imagine. Um, so yeah, hats off to you guys. That's super impressive. I had a little dip in the river recently and I've got to say that's definitely below 10 degrees Celsius. That was really cold. I had serious brain freeze. Um, so yeah, hats off to you guys. Uh, please do keep sending in your photos and videos uh, using the photo upload. That's on the screen right now. You can find the caption or description just down below. Right now, moving on to the caption competition. And last week, I used this photo of Johnny Brownlee from the 2016 ITU World Cup in Edmonton with his timing chip in his mouth. I don't really remember what happened here. Um, hopefully he managed to sort this out while he was cycling along. Either way, uh, we had some great captions coming in. Uh, first one from The Trouble with Mavis. So, well, firstly, they've apologized that they don't have a huge knowledge of elite triathletes. Um, so. Let's pick out Martin Van Riel as their example. They've said, let's see if Martin Van Riel can beat me without this. I just like the idea that um, someone may nab a timing chip and run off with it. Anyway, um, Andy Diwart said, um, Johnny Brownlee took eating up the competition a bit too literally. Thomas K said, Johnny crunches the numbers and is on pace for a cracking time. But the winner, and it seems like a lot of you like this one with uh, quite a few likes, um, Barry Moran said, Johnny, what do you recommend for nutrition on the bike? Johnny responds, chips. Simple, but I love it. Uh, so Barry, you are the winner. Get in touch and we'll send a swim cap out to you. But now for this week's caption competition, it's actually from the SLT Arena Games in uh, London. Well, yeah, it is uh, just this niche lag looking like he's having a little nap at the end of the swimming pool. As always, do get involved. Leave your captions in the comments section just down below. But folks, that is it for the show this week. I hope you have enjoyed it. Do make sure you check out all our other videos coming up on the channel this week. We have a step-by-step -step guide for the flip turn. So do make sure you check that out if you are currently unable to do a flip turn or maybe just need a little bit of help and advice on that. Also, we've got e-bike versus triathlon bike. And well, I've got to tell you, it was close. It was between Steve Jones and myself, uh, Steve being from EMBN. We went up a pretty famous climb here in the UK and yeah, it's an exciting one. So yeah, stay tuned for that one. Also, do make sure you check out our GTN shop. You probably have noticed I'm wearing a new t-shirt here. Well, we've got three new colors to choose from. This one, as I'm brilliantly modeling, if I do say so myself, is the mauve color. Uh, we've also got the sky blue color and also an ink gray all big fans of. Um, they are available out on our GTN shop already, so do make sure you head on over there and check those out. If you've enjoyed the show today, please do give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Do not forget to give us a follow over on social media and subscribe just down below. And do also make sure that you check out our Choose a Gym Near You video, which has just come out, as well as Do Your Shoulders Ache in the Aero Bars.